जय भी फ्रेंड्स हैप्पी अम्बेडकर जयंती टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम ओम प्रकाश महतो ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ फुले अम्बेडकर जयंती एवरी ईयर वी सेलिब्रेट आवर भीमा सप्तरा इन जे एन यू बट सिंस देर इज वाइड स्प्रेड ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन एक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड वी आर नॉट एबल टू ऑर्गेनाइज एनी पब्लिक इवेंट इन द कैंपस ऑफ जे एन यू देर फोर टूडे ऑन अम्बेडकर जयंती वी आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग वन वीक लेक्चर सीरीज एंड टूडे इज द फोर्थ डे ऑफ आवर लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन दिस ओकेजन वी हैव रिनाउंड स्कॉलर कंचाला प्रोफेसर कंचाला विथ अस ही हैज एक्सटेंसिवली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द एंटीकास राइटिंग्स His famous writings are Waffle Nationalism, Banya Smugglers. He has changed the discourse in contemporary Indian politics. Today, he would be speaking on the theme, an integrated focus on social science, natural science, medical science, a Dalit a Dalit Bahujan perspective. in the times of corona war so i would request everyone to watch the video and get enlightened by his thinkings and writings jai shavitri jai bhim jai mandal and here is our renowned scholar professor kanchalaya of uh, ambedkar uh, birth uh, anniversary in a situation of national lockdown and the indian government also declared april 14th as the national holiday to the nation will continue to be under lockdown and the whole world is now facing a major global crisis with a very unusual pandemic called corona virus pandemic which has put the whole world to lockdown economies are suffering people are dying the virus is spreading particularly the labor classes in the whole of the world are under tremendous stress uh that is because uh the poor do not have anything to eat in the circumstances of lockdown uh in india for example about uh, 500 million poor have lost the daily wage with jobs on uh march 25th when the prime minister of india declared that uh, india will be locked down from that day onwards so millions of workers mostly dalits adivasis and the backward classes uh had no place to stay in the urban centers had no money to pay for their regular food their children had no place to live because thousands and thousands of people asked them to vacate their houses and suddenly there was a pandemic uh a kind of uh, uh, a flux and millions started walking back to their villages for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers and on the way people fell sick some people died 
some people stopped all kinds of uh, uh, tragedies happened apart from the fear of uh, coronavirus attacking them they becoming sick with the virus and so on it is in this context that at a time when a government like bharatiya janata party and uh, the rashtriya swayam sevak combined was ruling india for the last 6 years there has been a systematic undermining of uh, medical sciences natural sciences and social sciences though the trend towards right wing people coming to power in the world swept uh in the uh mid uh, 2010s and so on india got into a crisis of uh, ideological conflict where the secular state that baba saheb ambedkar pandit jawaharlal nehru have established and built with a constitutional framework to have uh, a proper governmental medical setup for the poor and the middle class even to uh, look into the health issues of the rich over a period of time because of the privatization of medical uh, services almost 70% of indian medical uh, establishment went into the private hands this private medical structures got completely collapsed on the day of uh, declaration of shutdown and they stopped treating any patients and more so they themselves were afraid of corona virus attacking their hospitals their uh, doctors their uh, administrative staff so the entire health system to meet the challenge was left to only the government health system so for the first time what was seen as an advanced capitalist mode of market economy and market health system and market based science with a superimposition of superstitions and the mythology undermining social science teaching in the universities natural science teaching in the uh, higher educational institutions and not spending money on medical research and absolutely there was no preparation for facing a pandemic like corona in 2020 when we are discussing about ambedkar what was the spirit with which he wrote the indian constitution what was the spirit with which jawaharlal nehru who was the first prime minister ambedkar who was the first law minister and maulana azad who was the first education minister Sardar Patel, who was the first Home Minister, with a secular, democratic, socialist, uh, republican constitution uh, in the place, expected. They expected, particularly Ambedkar, that in a country of caste. 
and untouchability. Mass number of people who were starving by the time independence achieved. There was no education. There was no proper employment. The agrarian sector was completely weak. Neither the British nor the princely states had developed enough agrarian infrastructure. More than anything, there was no scientific basis to the nation. And science laboratories, uh, in science teaching institutions, and uh, particularly the medical science was the poorest. Perhaps America was aware that uh, India had faced a major bubonic plague in 1897. That was after seven years of his birth and eight years of Mahatma Pule's death. And this bubonic plague, like uh, the coronavirus today, was born in Yunnan of China, almost on the border states of the present Indian domain, and traveled through the ships to Bombay and Kolkata ports, and then entered into the whole of Indian land. At that time, massive poverty, there was no medical system in place. The British just was introducing the modern medicine and uh, the social science view was almost absent. What was in the circulation at that time was only religious knowledge among the Brahmins, some Banyas and some Kshatriyas who were reading some sort of Vedic texts and Ramayana, Mahabharata, but there was no way that Indians were studying advanced medicine of their time and also social science uh, education of their time because there was no proper school education at that time at all. So it was in this situation, one crore, that is 10 million Indians died. In. And mostly the poorest of the poor, the slum dwellers in the urban areas, and uh, it also spread to villages because that was a bubonic plague uh, which was spreading through water and also air, unlike the coronavirus, which spreads only through man to man's, human to human uh, relationship and uh, human droplets. So it spread like a wildfire. Uh, at that time, since the Indian superstition, which is also in a way Hindu superstition, even the Muslim rulers did not leave any rational thought, even though they ruled India for 800 years. And the British were just introducing modern medicine to India after 1857 war and uh, establishing uh, all Indian uh, uh, state. So there was no medicine of modern type at that time. 
So neither the Muslim rulers, who also believed, like the Hindu pundits, that God will save, Allah will save, and for reference, they were the Muslims were reading Quran, and the Hindus perhaps were reading Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, and Mahabharata. It was at this time, Maharashtra, like now, which is leading in coronavirus cases, became the center of epidemic. Later on, the Nizam state, where my own grandfather died in that plague, called Kancha Malaya, and his wife, my grandmother, along with her sister, ran away from urban location along with the sheep into the forest areas of my present village, Papaya Peak. So in Maharashtra, the Puna area became the epicenter. And uh, it was at that time, Savitri Bai Pule was alive. She was carrying on Mahatma Pule's Satya Sodhak movement. And the schools that she started. And by then, Dr. Eshwantara, who was their adopted son, was around 26, 27, and he became a medical doctor. He was Many do not know, was a son of a Brahmin widow, whom, including Tilak and the conservatives at that time, thought that should be killed, for she became a pregnant and of her husband's death. So the Satya Sodak movement, headed by Mahatma Pule and Savitri Bai, protected that young woman, and she delivered this boy, Eshwant Rao, and they adopted him, and they made him a doctor. This doctor, along with his mother, opened a clinic that was the first clinic in India to treat all caste people who were attacked by the bubonic plague. Thousands were dying. Savitri Bai was carrying children on her shoulders and was bringing to the clinic and Eshwant Rao was treating them with whatever medicine available with him. And quite tragically, Savitri Bai died in the same plague on January 10, 1897, and subsequently, the great Dr. Eshwant Rao died in the same plague. So Dr. Ambedkar knew the story of Maharashtra. And Nehru, who having come from a Brahmin family, grown up in the Western British educational English uh, medium cultural environment, adopted a rational view, and India adopted uh, positive medical science development, along with natural sciences, and also with the process of industrialization of India, as again as the Gandhian wish that India should live in only villages without industry. Now from there too, with all weaknesses, ups and downs, the scientific sphere of India has advanced step by step. Several universities came and several IITs came. Of course, the Dalit OBCs were few and far in between, 
in their admissions there because there were no reservations to the best of the scientific institutions. If only the scheduled class, the backward classes, and the women were to get into these institutions with reasonably good English education from the beginning, perhaps Indian science would have been on a different footing now. But they did not get. And later on, the Brahmins and Banyas, a uh, few Kshatriyas took to medical education. Science started going abroad, getting degrees. Now they are again in the leadership position in many of these institutions, including the space science that we have. And it was during Ambedkar and Nehru's period that every scientific view was taken. And meanwhile, because Ambedkar and Nehru were also equally uh, uh, social science-based uh, scholars, and particularly Ambedkar, was an outstanding scholar in many spheres of social science, philosophy, sociology, and more so his own discipline, economics, anthropology, and reading of ancient texts like Vedas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, to have a proper critique to mythology and uh, and superstitious values. He wrote enormous texts. And Nehru on his own wrote texts like the story of India, his own autobiography, and glimpses of world history, and so on and so forth. So there is a gradual building of science, social science, and medical sciences. They have visualized that top scale governmental medical uh, hospitals and medical colleges should be established. And that is where all India medical sciences have come out and all India medical institute like institutes. By then, India had only one advanced medical institute. That was the Christian medical College of Bellur in Tamil Nadu. That was the best. And that was started by the Christian uh, missionaries for the poorest of the poor, weakest of the weak. Unfortunately, the, the Muslim view also did not advance advanced medical institutions. They developed what is known as Yunani, and then the Hindu thought developed what is known as Ayurvedic, homeopathy, and so on and so forth. But these were not the medical systems that can face uh, major pandemics and uh, save people. They are okay with the gradual treatments of ailments of people. So by 1999, when BJP came to power in India, under the leadership of Vajpayee, we were on the track of advancing our natural, medical, and social sciences as a combination, very effective. But once they came, they reverted the whole discourse back to mythology and superstition and faith and belief. Now, the scholars of social science, along with the medical intellectuals, not merely doctors, and the uh, uh, natural scientists, were 
the virology and the biotechnology, uh, which are uh, meant to develop various modes of uh, uh, vaccines and so on, must understand that if a combination of philosophy, social science, reason, advancement of natural science, and medical sciences are not put in place. No modern nation, no modern people can face and survive this kind of crisis. Because many do not know that in the early 19th century, around 18, 10, 15, 20, there was no proper linking between social science thought based on reason, natural science discourse, and medical science. For the first time, it was the greatest German philosopher, Hegel, who worked out a holistic combinational advancement of social science philosophy, natural science philosophy, and medical science. And quite uh, interestingly, he did this in the critical times of epidemic in Germany. And uh, not many know that in 1831, at the age of 61, Hegel died with plague itself. Now, before that, though Kant and other thinkers were trying to develop an idea of reason, but they did not develop a language of, uh, of the capability that Hegel did by deploying the theory called thesis, antithesis, and synthesis with an idea of injecting into thinking a fundamental source. It's a, it's a sort of vaccine, actually, into the human thought reason. It is at this juncture, German people were more depending on God, idea of God to protect them from epidemic or plague. They were doing prayers in the churches, and uh, there was no advanced healthcare system even then. Uh, the Muslim world by then, after the Crusades and so on, uh, went backwards into uh, non-rational ideological framework, they have not developed advanced medical science. The Hindu world, particularly India, the Brahmin Banya, and the top so-called uh, Hindu scholarly people within Nepal also, they had no clue about social science thought, reason, natural science and medical sciences. They were hanging around saints, sadhus, and sannyasis like Patanjali and so on. The Buddhist world had built some rational thought, which was mainly present in China, Japan, Korea kind of area. But it also did not produce major writers to synthesize the ideas 
of natural science, social science, and medical sciences. So different people with a prepared state, because to, to protect people from a, such a massive pandemic, death, devastation of populations, devastation of countries, you need an organized state. So that state was not available at that time. Most of the rulers were dictators and self-central dictators. So Hegel, in order to create a strong state to defend, to, to, to protect people from the plague kind of epidemic that Germany was facing, thought if Napoleon becomes the ruler, German will become strong because there was a weak uh, dictator at that time. Now, more than that, what he did philosophically, he himself was a very well trained person in Christian religious thought and ethics. He himself was trained for pastor. Then he wrote a book on Jesus Christ called Life of Jesus. So, what he did was he transformed the whole spiritual idea into a rationalist state idea. And that's why he gave the famous statement, the state is the march of God on earth. So there is a need for a strong state to establish medical institutions, uh, even implement lockdowns like this, good or bad, I mean, assessment of situations, and feed people when they don't have food. Because in those days, democracy was not a very common system. Britain was only trying to experiment democracy. So Hegel created a state that can protect people. But at that time, it was a dictatorial state. So he thought religions will not be able to do this, though they are organized. After all, nobody else was more organized than the popeldom of Italy. Now, it, it collapsed. And more, nobody else was more organized after the Papaldam, the Mecca of uh, Muslim world, but it cannot protect them. And then mo nobody was more organized than the Brahmins of India with, within India, their own uh, mythological book reading and, you know, Rama and Mahabharat kind of. And the Buddhists were never so organized as, as one monolith into. So it is in this context, Hegel realized that state is the best suited. And remember, Ambedkar came to same conclusion about state. State has to be very strong to not just win wars with neighbors, but to protect people in crises. But what state it is? Hegel preferred Napoleon because Hegel was not a Democrat at that time because there was no idea of democracy. So though Rousseau, uh, uh, Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau built some view of democracy, but Hegel was a very much a pro Napoleonic man. But nonetheless, he wanted welfareism and strong state. After all, what is, what is protection of people in a pandemic crisis like coronavirus? That state has to 
give them food when there is no work for them when they isolated people in different parts of the country within their houses is a house arrest for everybody though the west and other countries including india are calling social distancing we the dalit bahujan scholars must describe this distancing as disease distancing but not social distancing we were already social distance with caste uno also later on changed its language as physical distancing but i would prefer calling it disease distancing for a time being and later on we should be cohesive we should be embracing we should be shaking hands we should be hugging each other that process of annihilation of caste will happen only with that process so the strong state is to give food and work for employment welfare system school education and more than anything universal egalitarian healthcare system education is more important in normal times but healthcare system becomes far more important in crisis like this therefore the state has to do this but did ambedkar think of a monarchic or a dictatorial strong state like hegel no ambedkar systematically worked out for a very strong democratic welfare state and he wanted several socialist characteristics to the state so that it can focus more on the poorest of the poor dalits adivasis and the backwards who never had the opportunity to develop their personality their wealth their home their children and so on and so forth so what kind of democracy there is a danger in such situations by using lockdowns by using the people's distress by using chaos sometimes that happens democratic systems may collapse individuals might try to become dictators in such situations but both ambedkar and nehru i would request my dalit bahujan friends in this situation of mythology dominance and food cultural upside down discourse where people need to eat more protein more immune food and need to isolate themselves maintain social distance a uh, rationalism of ambedkar and pandit jawarlal nehru uh, has to be discussed as a collective combination though they came from two different streams of thought the common goal was establish a sustained democratic state build a socialist ethical welfare state if not one party rule like the china or cuba or whatever but learn from them how to adopt a pro people oriented health system today china has overcome the corona virus with a socialist welfare drive and massive public health system today 
Cuba, which is the Fidel Castro and Che Guevara's dream country. Though economically not very advanced, but medically, it is the best in the world. It is Cuba alone has 8.5 doctors per 10,000 people. India has only one doctor. Not even America has that much. No European country. And today Cuba arrested coronavirus. It's not afraid of coronavirus. So therefore, a country of 1.3 billion people facing lockdowns and poverty, hunger, schools closures, our dream of English medium getting a hurdle with the coronavirus crash of economy. We need to bring back America's state socialism and nationalization of the entire health system of India. The Bahujan movement from now onwards should focus on asking for nationalization of private hospitals. Why is it that poorly paid government doctors, not so well trained, hardly any Western educated doctors are there in the government systems, those who are highly paid or in the private hospitals, and they are sitting at home like any one of us. All they have closed down their hospitals. They believe in individual health, slow killer diseases, getting treated with high technology and making profit. But when masses, including the rich, face a crisis of corona, they behave like cold doctors, their paramedical staff and the establishments and the owners behave like normal people. No. Nation today is in a war. As our soldiers are always ready to fight any war on any border, in any sea, all doctors, private or government, should come into the war in this situation. Some cannot save their families and some give up their families and so. The police, the constable, more so the municipal village, <clears throat> town cleaning campaign cadres what we call Safai Karmachari. Their salaries must be made equal to <coughs> at least a teacher, at least a school teacher or a nurse. Because look at their, the way they risk. It is all Dalit Bahujan masses. At that time, 1897, Brahmins were not becoming doctors. Our sacrificed. Today they are becoming doctors. Okay, they are also serving in government hospitals, COVID patients, lockdown. <clears throat> but who are the people which caste are saving the country from disinfecting the coronavirus on the roads? Which constable from which caste background? From upper Echelons, there may be all castes. Women. Hospital workers, cleaning workers are women mostly. So they are our people. What is the salary they are getting? If a university teacher gets at the entry level of recruitment 50,000, these workers get hardly 5,000. A doctor gets sent. 
but a private sector doctor gets more. Why? Where does the money come? It is from the patient. Therefore, we should make a movement in the name of Ambedkar and Pule. Today is the Mahatma Pule's birth anniversary day. And we are recording this talk for Ambedkar's birthday. Ours is a combined movement. So the post-corona war world will be different. Post-corona, India will be different. Post-corona, health system should be different. Post-corona, wage system should be different. Today, Prime Minister reduced 30% of their salaries. Telangana Chief Minister reduced 70% of MLA, MP, of MLA minister salaries, 50% of all our salaries. I would say, bring down all salaries to 50% and pay more to the sweeping staff, to the nurses and to the early entry doctors and don't allow private sector to pay as they want. And if they use their profits only for their good life, traveling all the time on aeroplanes, doing marriages in aeroplanes across the world, coronavirus will Coronavirus aeroplanes now, don't forget. Earlier it was hunting only the poor, but future world, the viruses will be walking straight into your AC room first, your AC aircraft first, your AC boardroom first, your AC IT lab first. So don't forget, who will save you? It is these people. Therefore, as Indians, we should start the campaign in the name of Ambedkar, Pule, Savitri Bai, in the name of Gautam Buddha, who visualized the egalitarian life in this country way back in sixth century BC. Imagine that man lived for 80 years in those days with a conviction, with good food that he ate, among the people. So don't propagate this vegetarianism, that thing. Don't spread myths now. Don't take the society back to uh, mythology. You study your mythology, I have no problem. You study your religion, I have no problem. I have to study all religions with respect. But Developing social science, natural science, and medical science as a combination in a suitable manner to our own land, our own heritage, our own culture. We have built this society from Harappa civilization to present. What do I call Harappa to Biram? You know, the god shepherd God that we in Telangana worship. But in between, we lost out. The producers, the farmers, who are now tilling the land in the crisis of lockdown, producing our food. If they lock down, we will die in our own houses. Don't forget. Industries are locked down. Even pharmaceutical industries are locked down, not many will die. Some will die. But if the farmers lock down their tilling, their harvesting, they're shifting the crop to markets, the nation will die. Therefore, from other part to we built this population. You know, in 
1897, when one crore died, the entire Indian population, including Pakistan, Bangladesh, was about 19 to 20 crores. In that one crore died. But leaving Pakistan and Bangladesh population aside, we built a population of 1.3 billion by 220. Who did this? It is the productive masses. The guys who were removing the dead bodies of rich upper class who were not touching their dead bodies because it was a play body. They removed with their own hands and faced it with boldness and with the humanity of their own food. What was the food? That included many meats, that included very few cereals in those days, but definitely beef also. And their courage, their confidence, their living in soil all the time living among animals all the time, sustained their immunity levels. Yesterday, one doctor from US called Shiva, who was a Dalit, who established a big, uh, big pharmaceutical industry in America, protested against the president's method of handling it, and he gave an interview to a TV channel. You can see that in YouTube. He said, I come from an untouchable background. And when big plagues attacked our masses, the feudal lords would not save us. The governments would not save us. The medical industry did not save us. But we defeated the viruses with our immunity levels. We were born in the soil, we lived with the soil, and we have grown in the sun. The soil and the meats that we ate, the fruits that we ate, the roots that we ate, and the, they gave us vitamin C, all kinds of things, and the sun that we were walking in gave us enough vitamin D. He said, all Europe, America has to live like us, my parents, as Dallas once upon a time, to sustain, to survive this kind of viruses. Not even vaccines save the world in future. That's what he said. So the new thought is being thrown out by Dalit Bahujan doctors, engineers, uh, social scientists. Uh, natural scientists, which is different from book reading scientists or lab experimenting scientists. No, the coronavirus can be defeated by people who experimented their life with the productive fields in the soil and hot sun, eating their natural food, which combines meat, vegetable, everything. So this was Ambedkar's India. This is Ambedkar's India. This is Mahatma Pule's India. This is Gautam Buddha's India. This India, this time, luckily our immune system is protecting us. Our BCZ vaccine seem to have been working in our favor. But if our people are not given and of food in this crisis, law may die. And we don't know what kind of brains are there in the, among those people. There could be many Ambedkars among them. There could be many Savitri Vaipulis among them. There could be many Gautam Buddhas among them. There could be many Hegel's and Marx among them, or Einstein's only. So therefore, let us resolve to cooperate, of course, with this government, but 
start a campaign on expanding the collective energy of science, medical science, natural science, and social science. Let these universities, labs, uh, be not weakened, and we should strengthen and double them by any other virus is trying to threaten us in future. Thank you very much. Jai Ambedkar, Jai Pule, Jai Savitri Bhai Pule. Thank you all.